Welcome to your tutorial for Notre Dame Ignite Your Spark Wellness Day. Uh, we're going to make a uh, spinner, a, a spinning top, engineered to spin for about three to four minutes. To start up FreeCAD on the desktops we use in our center, find FreeCAD on the desktop monitor and then either double click it or right click on it and then click execute. Your next step will be to start a new document. So go up to the upper left hand corner and either click on file and then new or click on this icon here, both of which will start a new document. Do either of those steps now. Next I'll show you two steps. Opening the drop down menu that reveals all the different part workbenches and making a selection. So this is your drop down menu for the workbenches. Click on that and go to part. That's the workbench we want to start on. So do those two steps. Open up the drop down and click on part. In the part workbench you'll see that we get a number of primitives and that basically is what the part workbench is for, is for things you can make out of basic shapes. The basic shape we want to start with is a cylinder. So click create a cylinder. When the cylinder first appears, you'll see a circle because we're looking at the cylinder from the top down. You'll also see over on this side, the cylinder has been given a label called cylinder. We want another cylinder. So once again, return to the cylinder primitive and click on it one more time. Here you can see we now have two labels, cylinder and cylinder 001. But Visibly, we just see one circle in the center because we're looking at the cylinder from the top down. Let's change our view. That's what these boxes are for, different views. We're going to click on this one. It's the asymmetric view. It allows us to see from a 3D angle. Click on that now. Now we can see an object that looks a little bit more like a cylinder. Over on the left hand side where we have labels is the only way we know there's two cylinders because we have a cylinder and a cylinder 001 label. Below this box you see there's another box with a data tab below it. In order to see the data you have to select the label. Go ahead and select by clicking on it with a left click cylinder 001. Now your selected cylinder should now be highlighted in green. Below, your data should be showing up, and we can change this data. Go to where it says radius, and change the radius value by highlighting it, and then typing over it to 40 millimeters. Please do that now. You'll see that your cylinder is now bigger than the view screen. We'll fix that in a second, but we want to make another change to our cylinder. Let's, instead of having it as 10 millimeters, change that to 12. So double click on, click on the 10 until it's all highlighted in green, change it to 12 and hit enter. Do that now, please. As mentioned before, your cylinder is now bigger than the view screen. To fix that, go up to this part of your toolbar on top. Find the page that looks like it has a magnifying glass on it and give that a click. Please do that now. You might have noticed that beside the data tab, there is a second tab called view. We'll go ahead and select that now. The view tab allows us to do and change things that have to do with the appearance. One of the appearance changes we can change is whether our object is transparent. Find the transparent line second from the bottom in the data view. Click on the zero and change the value to 66 and press enter. Do that now, please. Now that it's transparent, we can now see the cylinder that was inside the other cylinder the whole time. Let's go back up to the top and click on that cylinder. Can you do that for me now, please? With that cylinder selected, return your attention back to the two tab choices between view and data and click on data. Now that you're in data, you should see the radius and height of our second uh, cylinder. Click on the two millimeters that is the radius and then type in 35 millimeters. Please do that now. We can see the cylinder object inside our other objects is now much larger but it's below the surface. We want to raise it to the surface. To do that 
I need you to click on the arrow beside placement. Please do that now. Clicking on the arrow beside placement opens up some other things where we can adjust the axis or the position. Now, please click on the arrow beside position. Having clicked on the arrow beside position, you can see we can adjust the X, Y, and Z value of where our selected object is. And since our one object is 10, our selected object is 10 millimeters high, the other object is 12 millimeters high, we're going to put in a value of 2 to make them up at the same height. So please do that now. You may or may not know that one of the features of the control key on your keyboard is that it allows you to select multiple items in the order that you click on them. Find the control on your keyboard now so you can use it in the coming slide. Hold control down on your keyboard and while doing so click on cylinder 001. By clicking on it first you're letting FreeCAD know that this is the piece we want to keep. Now still holding down control on your keyboard click on cylinder, the first one. This should result in both of them being selected. Go ahead and do that now. You now have two selected and they should be highlighted in green. Uh, the first one selected is what we're going to keep. The second one selected is what we're going to subtract. And the tool we're going to use to do it is this make a cut of two shapes tool, which is a blue ball with a white one over top of it. Go ahead and click on that now. The result of the cut is you've now made a dish by hollowing out the first cylinder by subtracting the first one. Let's add a new object in this slide by clicking on the cone object. Go ahead and click on that now. To begin with, our cone isn't very useful for the top we're making, so go ahead and click on the cone object in the left-hand side. Please, do that now. By clicking on the cone, we reveal its data and we're looking for the radius 1 and radius 2 data because we need to make some changes. Change radius 1 by clicking on it and typing 11 and change radius 2 by clicking on it and typing 5. Please do that now. You can see the result of the changes to the cone on your object now. We want to add in a new object and that is the sphere object so go ahead and click on that please. Now the reason we added a sphere is because our top is going to contain marbles and we're going to use marbles for a smooth surface for the spinning center and for weight around outside circumference. The marbles are going to be about 16 millimeters in diameter. So just know that as we're making the rest of this top. After clicking on the sphere, you probably don't see it in your object, and that's because it's hidden under the cone. I've made my cone transparent so you can see where it is. But what you do need to do is go over to sphere, the label here in the corner, and click on it so we can make some changes. Please click on it now. Now that we've clicked on the sphere, we can see its data view. And in the data view, the first thing we want to change is its radius. We're dealing with 16 diameter marbles so radius is half of a diameter so we want to change that to 8. Go ahead and change that to 8 and hit enter now. The next thing we want to change is the placement of the marble. So of course we got to click on the drop down arrow for placement. Go ahead click on that now. Having clicked on the drop down arrow for placement we can see access and position so click on the drop down arrow for position now please. Having clicked on that, we see what we want to get to, the X, Y, and Z plane. We want the Z marble to be a little further in so that it, um, when we put a marble in it, it doesn't just fall out. Change the value in the Z axis to 1, please. And hit enter. We're going to subtract this sphere from our object so we can put a marble in this space. But it's not the only marble we're going to be dealing with. In order to uh, work with some additional marbles, why don't we use this sphere as our template. So go over to where it says sphere here, right click on it, and then click on copy. Do that for me please. Now that we've copied this sphere to the clipboard, we can right click on it and say paste to get another sphere. Do that please. Right clicking and pasting should have given you this new sphere, sphere 001. Click on it and then turn your attention down to its data view. 
here we want to make some additional changes. These are the changes we want to make. To the Y value, click on the zero and type 36.5 and hit enter. Do that now, please. Before we leave here, there's a second change we want to make. Click on the one that's in the Z value and change that to four and hit enter. Do that, please. We actually want to put a total of seven marbles around this perimeter, but adding things, adding marbles in one at a time and calculating exactly where they'll be best balanced is a little repetitive and math orientated. Luckily, repetitive and math orientated is what computers do best. So to get to something that'll do that for us, click on your workbenches and go to draft and click on that. Do that, please. Changing workbenches changes the things you have available to you in top in your menu items and icons. Um, what we're looking for is one that looks like this. Find it and give it a click. It's our array functions. So please click on that now. After clicking on array, you should see that the data view has changed significantly in the corner. Um, there is a line that says array type. I want you to find that and then click on the area where it says ortho. There will be a drop down arrow, click on that and choose polar. So if you could change the array type to polar now, that would be great. So if you completed the previous step, your array type should now read polar. You can now grab the uh, scroll bar and drag it down to the bottom. What we're looking for is the number of polar arrays, which you might just see number PO. Change that to seven and hit enter. Do that now. You can now see we have seven spheres added to it, perfectly balanced around the circumference. But there is one problem. They're a little low in the design, but it's easy enough to fix. We can go inside our array by clicking on this drop down arrow beside it. Click on that drop down arrow now. Having clicked on the drop down arrow, we can now see the sphere inside the array. Click on the sphere so it's selected. Now, please. With the sphere selected, we can now see its data, but we need to change its placement. So we have to hit the drop down arrow beside placement to get into that area. Click on that now. Placement, opening that up gives us some more options and we want to do the same for position. So click on the arrow beside position now. Having clicked on position, we can see the X, Y, and Z axis. We want to raise the sphere, so that's the Z axis. Click on the four and type 6 to change that value and hit enter. Do that now. So that's everything we need to do in draft mode. So let's go back to our workbench selector tool as step 1 and from the selection of things click on the part menu. So uh, step 1 select on the workbenches and then step 2 select part. Do those two steps now. So right now our little high-tech spinning top is made up of four components, two of which we're going to keep and two of which we're going to subtract. So let's go uh, take a closer look at it. And the two pieces we're going to keep is what we're going to select first. So that is the cut. So hold down control on the keyboard and select cut. Continue holding down control on the keyboard and select cone. Select it so that those two are highlighted now, please. Now that you've selected those two, you might have noticed that one of the uh, icons became uh, clickable up top, and that's this one. It's make a union of selected shapes. So go ahead, find this particular icon, the two blue uh, balls that look like they're merging into each other, and give it a click. Now we're going to make a union of the two pieces we're not going to keep. So if we go back over here to the labels, you'll see that the previous ones are now just called Fusion. So we're going to do the same thing. Hold down Control and select Sphere by itself, which is the center sphere of our top. And then the ones that go around the outside perimeter are the array. So select the array. That's it. Select those two and then we'll continue on from there. Now that you got those two selected, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go find the union icon and give it a click. Now our whole top has been grouped into two different selections, Fusion and Fusion 001. The part we want to keep is Fusion, so click on that first. Now the part we want to subtract is Fusion 001. So hold down Control on the keyboard so you can make a second selection and then click on that. So go ahead, 
select those two items in that order now. Now that we got the two items selected, we will make a new um, toolbar icon visible. It's this one, blue with a white above it. Make a cut of two shapes. Go ahead and click that. We've only got two more items to add, and one of them is the spindle in the middle. So go ahead and find the uh, cylinder icon and click on that, please. After clicking on the cylinder icon, the cylinder label will show up on the side. Click it so that it's selected. Selecting the label makes its data available. I want you to find the radius value, which is 2 by default. Click on that and change it to 4. Click Enter. Do that now. The next value I want, to want you to change is the height value. Default is 10. Click on that and change it to 30. Hit Enter. Please do that now. The next value you're going to change is the Z value. It should be just above. If you don't see it, remember you got to open and close the position placement, then position to get there. But it should be visible. Go ahead and click on the zero and change that to nine. Hit enter. Please do that now. The next thing we're going to do is create a part. And when we're creating a part, we got to do something a little different. We got to go to this icon in the corner. Looks like a stair. Go ahead and click on it. It tells it tells FreeCAD we're going to create a new part and make it active. Go ahead and click it now. But part is not the right workbench for creating complicated parts. We've got to click on the workbench selector tool and go to part design. So do that now. Click on the selector tool and click part design. After hitting part design, you should see that you're in a task that asks you to create body. Go ahead and click that. If you don't see that, click on model, then click on task and it should show up. And then go ahead and click create body when you see it. Those two steps just give us a folder to contain our part in. But we need to make the part still. So let's go to part design, click on it, and go down near the bottom and you'll find something called involute gear. Click on that. Our gear right now is very large and it's appearing at the bottom of our object. If you want to see it, go ahead and find the bottom view icon and click on that. Right now our gear is way too large. And if we look over on the left hand side, one of the reasons it's too large is that's too many teeth. So we're going to check 26 and change that value to 8. Uh, don't hit enter yet, but just change that to 8. Go ahead and do that now. The other reason is the modules. Modules is just a fancy term for the distance in between the teeth. Let's change that from 2.5 to 1.5. Make that change and go ahead and hit enter. Do that now. Now you should have the gear the right size. To do the rest of the work, we got to switch over to the model tab. So click on that, please. Now the uh, model attribute should look like this. Uh, I want you to click on the down arrow beside part. This will open up um, so that you can see the body. Click on the involuted gear and drag and drop it into the body. You should be able to then click on the arrow and see that the involuted gear has been moved into the body. Go ahead and move the involuted gear into the body this way now. Two simple steps left for involuted gear to make it thick. You got to select it and then you got to go to this icon is called pad the selected sketch and click on it. Do those two steps please. Two steps for you in this slide as well. The pad parameters by default have a 10 millimeter length. That's good for us. Go ahead and say OK. The second step I want you to do is a simple one. Just go back to 3D view and click on that icon for asymmetric view is another name for it. Go ahead and click on that now. Our gear is now at the bottom of our stem. We want to raise that up. So we got to find where that involuted gear went and it's inside the pad we just made. So click on the icon to the left of it, then click on the involuted gear to bring up its data. Do that now. To raise the gear, go into its positions tab if it's not already open and just put 30. Remember 30 was the height of our stem. Hit enter and you'll see the gear goes back to the top. Go ahead, do that now. Congratulations, you've completed your first 3D CAD design. 
and hopefully this has ignited a little bit of a spark for you in the area of uh, CAD design, computer animated design, and 3D printing.